As the Blitzchunk controversy burns ever hotter, Blizzard seemingly are only digging themselves in deeper. In an attempt to avoid the spotlight, they have cancelled a planned Overwatch event with Nintendo NYC, and they've also dumped player cams and post-match interviews from the collegiate Hearthstone circuit. Because of this, we have a lot to get into. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Industry Report, the regular series where we dive deeper into the gaming news. Before we get started, be sure to like, sub, and ring that bell to let the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying our content. Okay, let's go. Overwatch is set to release on the Nintendo Switch this week, right in time for the in-game Halloween event. Last week it was announced that fans would have the opportunity to celebrate the game's long-awaited launch at a special event in the Nintendo New York store, where the first 150 people to register would also get the chance to meet some of the Overwatch voice cast, so overall, it was a pretty sweet deal and a decently hype event for the people who were interested in it. Now, this event was of course organized before Blizzard set themselves on fire publicly, and as such, it has been cancelled. Making the announcement on Twitter, Nintendo NYC apologized for the inconvenience, and they basically emphasized that the event had been cancelled by Blizzard, not by them. So it's hard to know precisely what prompted the cancellation, but I think we can make a few educated guesses here. The main concern is likely physical protests. Uh, indeed, calls to protest at BlizzCon have been gathering steam, so an NYC protest would not be that surprising. And while it may have only been a small protest, Blizzard was likely afraid that it would spiral into another big story, something that they clearly are not that good at dealing with right now. Instead, they've opted for the type of coverage that I'm doing now, covering you know, the cancellation of the event rather than dissecting an event that turned out to be a disaster. Now, of course, if there were protests, it would have primarily been Blizzard's problem publicly, but you've got to remember that this was at the New York Nintendo store, and it was Nintendo's event because of that. And that means that Nintendo's NYC staff would have been the people dealing with the protests. Now, sure, Blizz staff would have been there, but chances are neither group are trained to deal with a high-stress protest situation like, say, BlizzCon security staff would be. Additionally, Blizzard won't want to drag Nintendo into such a position as it could sabotage their relationship. Then of course I imagine the Blizz have recognized that simply they just didn't have that much to gain, but did have a whole lot to lose. Here's the deal, Overwatch Switch, that's expected, therefore it's not unusual, but an event protest, well that would get headlines. Discussions of boycotts and sub cancellations, they've been circulating since Blitzchung's protest, but the Switch version of Overwatch has flown under the radar there, even though it is Blizzard's next release. Now of course that's a game that's a few years old, there may not have been massive of demand uh, on the Switch as a platform, but undoubtedly it was a big E3 announcement and there are people who are excited about it. And that does make it a significant part of Blizzard and Nintendo's partnership, one that neither party will want to be caught up in the HK firestorm. Now, the potential for bad PR, it really is an essential factor here. Blizzard have shown themselves willing to take a short-term PR hit in exchange for potentially avoiding a long-term one, though this may have backfired as Blizzard have also shown that they're actively afraid of protests. And that that's something that will only encourage further protests. I mean, even Nintendo, they will not be keen to bring Blizzard's current reputation onto their own doorstep, because here's the deal there. Nintendo have been trying to move into China. They've recently announced a partnership with Tencent to bring the Switch over there, so clearly Hong Kong protests would not gel well with Nintendo's goals there. Now, security threats are also a distinct possibility that we should mention. I mean, even if they are only just called in via troll, it is the sort of thing that like neither Blizz nor Nintendo will want to take a risk on. It's impossible to say that there was a security threat, but there's always people who are willing to co-opt cultural events like this for their own purposes. Indeed, relating to the general situation, a former Blizzard employee tweeted that Blizzard staff have been told not to wear identifying Blizzard stuff off campus because of credible threats. Of course, any threats made against staff or like, you know, I mean, just some artist who's working in a game, like, people being threatened because of the stuff the leaders have done, that is absurd and that is worthy of condemnation. And I mean, even extending that to BlizzCon, like, yeah, the BlizzCon Q&As, they're likely going to be a disaster. But that said, is the, like, lead developer of World of Warcraft really going to have much to say here? No, not really. So it's one of those awkward things where the regular staff really... I mean, it sucks that they're paying a price for the bad decisions of their leadership. So overall, I think you can easily see why they would want to cancel this event, but we can all also see how it really does play into their pretty poor media image. Now, of course, it shouldn't be surprising at this point that canceling this launch event is not the only questionable-ish decision the Blizzard have made this week, because we have an update following the on-camera protest of the American University Collegiate Hearthstone team last week. So the initial shutdown of the post-match interviews has expanded, 
Blizzard. This week, Taspa, who run the league, only do Blizzard games and are actually HQ'd in Blizzard's HQ, so I really do see them as an extension of Blizzard. They have announced that there will be no player or team cams and no post-match interviews going forward for the league. And this really does just reiterate our earlier point about Blizzard basically letting slip just how scared they are of protests and their consequences. This also speaks to the fact that Blizzard honestly just, they don't seem to have a good idea of how to deal with this, just how to handle situations like this. I mean, cancelling the Nintendo event to avoid a physical protest and like real world sort of altercations, I get that, but this, I think it looks even worse. Like, hoping to curtail players' ability to exercise speech by simply cutting cameras and refusing to talk to them? That's not the way to go. Blizzard has constantly stated that the protest by Blitzchung, and therefore the AU Hearthstone team, was in contravention of their rules. Now, this was the same rationale used for handing out Blitzchung's punishment. Yet, no punishment has been forthcoming for the AU team since their protest, but the recent scaling back of Blitzchung's punishment, well, that may suggest that the AU team are not going to be punished at all. So perhaps the AU team had a point when they said that Blizzard really only cared once it was in China's view, and because it happened in a US territory, they're just not going to be punished because Blizzard don't care because it doesn't really have a Chinese focus. Anyway, if Blizzard disagrees with a political speech at a policy level, then it needs to be dealt with at a policy level, like with its response. The policy wording and the regulatory nuances, which must in some way run things at Blizzard, they need to be revised in a way which fits with the values both of Blizzard and and their players. Cutting cameras and binning interviews, that just speaks volumes to Blizzard's desire to bury their head in the sand and wait for this to go away. This has certainly been a difficult time for Blizzard, and their attempts to make things better, well, they've only made things harder for themselves. The cancellation of the Nintendo Overwatch launch just illustrates a profound fear of protest on Blizzard's part, and the willingness to suffer now by cancelling it, as opposed to later. Now, that being said, if there was indeed a credible security threat in place for the event, then, yeah, this reluctance, I think it could be understood and respected. Though, the collegiate Hearthstone story, I think that's fundamental different. It involves no problems with staff physically, no threat against staff, not, nothing, you know, nothing like that, nothing that could really escalate. Instead, it just shows how blizzards are scared of words, and their heavy-handed and short-sighted attempts to avoid that protest, that's only going to make them look worse. Then I think that both of these pieces of news came out within a few hours of each other. I think that's rather important, as it likely indicates that Blizzard are attempting to lock things down to some degree. Still, the steps they've taken here they look to be short-term, and they are maybe designed to stall for time while Blizzard develops a future strategy. I think Blizzard likely knows that no matter how many cameras they turn off here, this is something they're going to have to deal with for an extended period of time. It feels like the pressure is getting to them, though, and with all eyes being in BlizzCon next month, well, they may be running out of time to save themselves. Moving forward, I'm particularly interested in, though, is the stock market response, because Here's essentially what happened, right? Blizzard decided that they would, you know, like do the Blitz Chung ban and take away the winnings to appease China. Now, what did the stock market do in response? It had a minor dip. But overall, that was the stock market saying, yeah, this is a negative PR hit now, but growth in China is extremely important for even for their games, for their mobile games, and also just for esports, right? But I think what maybe happened is most groups underestimated how this would just catch on. It really has caught fire. And... I mean, we just have to see how self-sustaining this drama is, because if this carries through over an extended period of time, then Blizzard could see reduced earnings from their Western audience, who maybe really have just been alienated from the company. And at some point, we're just... We're just going to have to see, you know, will the stock market actually reflect a Western hit? And then even more, with BlizzCon coming up, what happens if Blizzard's big announcements... I mean, it's it's so hard to overstate how important this BlizzCon is. Last BlizzCon was such a disaster, yet with this one, we're pretty sure there's Overwatch 2. We're almost entirely sure there's Diablo 4, where, I mean, yeah, there basically will be another World of Warcraft expansion, among with a whole bunch of other announcements, right? That is so major to them as a business and just as an event, like with virtual ticket sales, making up a lot of revenue as well. So if that gets overshadowed by protests, I really would expect the stock to dip because maybe that's when the analysts would start to think, right, they made the correct decision with China and maybe that's important for their five-year outlook. 
But if we look at their near-term announcements, they've just been drowned out by a massive wave of protests. Then we could see the stock dip, and that truly would be interesting because once that stock dips, that's when the real pressure is applied to Blizzard, where they've got to realize, you know, oh dear, short term we're losing because of this decision we've made that's in line with growth in the Chinese market. What the hell do we do? And honestly, I don't know the answer. I mean, I know what I would like as a member probably of the audience that they are, you know, alienating a little bit with their decision making here. But as to whether, you know, as to what their like correct goal for the stock market is overall, I can't say exactly. I'm not Nostradamus. Sure, certainly if I was Nostradamus with the stock market, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd probably just have infinite money because, um, well, you can't really predict that thing in advance, can you? Certainly, though, it's a wild situation, and I'm just going to be paying a lot of attention to the market reactions here. That's really, I think, just going to steer Blizzard, steer Blizzard in a direction. If they see their Western audience is hurting, maybe we'll see them move back towards that Western audience. Really, though, time will tell. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think about all of this down in those comments below, specifically on the stock market. The most interesting thing here is stock market pressure, in my view. I'd love to hear what you've got to say about that, especially since you've got notable examples of companies like Epic Games who do not have those publicly traded stock market pressures who are able to take more, I guess, executive action because they just have a controlling shareholder who can pretty much do what they want. So let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to catch the next episode of the Roundup, which will be up today. And with that, I will see you next time.